This episode of Stuck in Vermont is brought to you by Burlington College. Oh, nice. Ooh, President of the United States or the Vice President? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days. My name's Ava Solberger. We are under the Golden Dome in Montpelier, Vermont. And the press decides the subjects to be asked. Love him or hate him? Peter Frame has been essential reading for Vermont movers and shakers since he first began his political column back in the 80s. Because he was the preeminent political reporter. And I think the best a political reporter in the state of Vermont. You haven't made it in politics until you get a nickname from Peter Frayne. From Ho Ho and Ruthless Ruth to Jeezum Jim and Old Bernardo, he's covered the political landscape with a combination of dogged reporting and barstool charm. Wonderful. A year and a half ago, Frayne was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And what did he do? The old dog started blogging. I'll blog about it. And he beat the cancer. The comeback kid. Now 13 years after teaming up with Seven Days newspaper, He's retired his column, and Frayne is on a whole new track. And readers are showing their love by awarding him the 2008 Best Print Journalist Daisy this Friday at the Echo Center. A writer couldn't ask for anything more. Now that he's laid down his pen, it's finally safe to ask, what made Peter Frayne the best loved and the most feared journalist in Vermont for the past 20 years? None of your damn business. <laughs> uh, Peter has had a, just an enormous amount of courage uh, in his lifetime, taken on some powerful forces. A lot of the major stories in this state and other news media were broken first by Peter Frank. He is an incredibly gifted reporter. Peter's had a huge impact. Hugely influential. Peter has been the eyes and ears of the political landscape. Peter provided something that no one else provided. He was the reality check. His acute observation and really holding people's feet to the fire is really important in journalism for somebody to have that role. That is what a good reporter does, to ask the right questions. Peter was a reporter that had a great rapport with every single person in this building. It's my sparkling Irish personality. Great sense of humor, but you couldn't put anything by it. Peter is a great person to sit and talk with. We're all people, be personable, come on. You never knew when he was going to strike. Tables overturned, I mean, there's a lot of, I'm sure some of it is legend at this point, but. It could be volatile. He yeah. drove me nuts on occasion. Pretty salty. Yeah. He definitely livened things up. He's, He's a very larger than life. big presence. And he was the kind of guy you want to go out and have a beer with. I was always able to be joined by Republicans, Democrats, progressives, and independents. And I've sat in a bar stool next to Peter. <laughs> My father named me after his little brother has had his head blown off by the black and tans in Dublin. Peter David Frayne, he died for Ireland. Freedom is something you fight for. It's precious. It's not to be taken for granted. While Peter was writing, everybody knew that they had to read his column. He had his, all of his fans, and but all the people who were afraid of what he was going to say had to read it too. And the highest compliment I get is from folks who tell me that I make politics interesting. Everybody in the building has to grab seven days. I always went straight to his column. It was insightful, it was witty, it was fun, it was challenging. You loved reading Peter Frayne to see who's he going to get. Well, I mean, I took my turn in the barrel like everybody else. But if you were in his favor, what you knew was that at some time very soon you would be out of his favor. Can you call him off? Can you make him stop? No, he can't. That's what made Seven Days the newspaper that it is today. I mean, I'm into reality. We're finding out what the is really going on. That's why newspapers exist. If you'd ever go to a press conference, Peter would ask the questions that no one else would ask. The real question, the hard question, the politically incorrect question. It came from a very genuine place. He really wanted to know the answer for himself. And he pursued it, uh, sometimes relentlessly. There are no sacred cows with him. That kept people on their toes. It's what it's about, to push the envelope that way. That's what democracy, use it or lose it. And once he gave someone a nickname, it stuck. Governor Scissorhands, because that's Peter's name for uh, Douglas. Ho Ho, that's what he calls Howard Dean. Nicknamed me Quick Stop Kurt. Vince the Prince. Pamster, yeah. He's had it for 25 years. I think he called me the Scud. And as long as I didn't have one, it was a good thing. <laughs> you never gave me a nickname. Who's going to do it now? Can I get more coffee? He drinks a lot of coffee, that man. He likes his coffee. Everybody's got to be somewhere. Hey, I stopped going to bars. <laughs> Peter's kind of part of the architecture in here now. He's like a regular fixture. And he keeps the other customers entertained. It'd be a weird day if he didn't come in. Coffee. Now that I've stopped, people feel uh, it's safe to approach me. They're not going to end up in the column. I uh, miss his column. Peter Frayne is 
Sui generous. There's not another person like him. I know that he'll continue to do really good things. Here's the future. I think we probably have not heard the last of Peter Frame. It's not over yet. We don't know. One can only wonder what the future holds for Peter Frame. I'm excited to find out. We'll get stuck around with you again real soon. Yeah. Jesus, got me eating this camera. You want it this close? No comment. Oh, no comment? Okay, really? <laughs> well, I am a Scorpio, for whatever that's worth. Uh, so is Howard Dean, by the way. I was a sociology major. Uh, I think I became an atheist around 1969. Male menopause. Here we are. That was basically an ID number at my school in San Francisco. You know, I was 02118722. I was in Corey level. I grew to really, really miss the camaraderie and community of a smaller school like this and the ability to actually get genuine, sincere feedback. And small class size is great too. Go to Burlington College. <laughs>